Hey everybody, Alex Kazura, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers tape breakdown and analysis. I'm going to talk about today how depleted the Steelers defense was on Sunday. No TJ Watt, no Mika Fitzpatrick, no Joe Hayden, not even a guy like Isaiah Loudermilk playing in this one, coupled with all the other injuries his team has suffered throughout the year, most notably Stephon Tuitt and Tyson Alu-Alu. And so the this will be a negative video, obviously, when you allow 41 points. Generally, the defensive breakdowns are negative. Um, I don't want to confuse it with being a, an incredibly hypercritical of one, uh, one. I just want to show what happens with the little things when you lose some of your key guys and just as importantly, some of your key communicators like a Minka Fitzpatrick when you're pressing young guys in new roles or guys playing for one of the first times in their career, as we'll see, in just a little communication assignment alignment stuff that can add up. Some of these are, you know, small things. Some of these are small things that turn into big things. So I just kind of want to go through just a, a good example. I thought Sunday night was uh, for the Steelers defense of those little things when you ask guys to do things basically for the first time. So again, don't want to be incredibly critical of some young guys and rookies and new roles and things like that, but want to, but want to talk about it and just kind of show the value of having experience. It's kind of, I guess, the theme of today's video. So first clip here comes against the Chargers here. They're going to bring the tight end in. This is going to put Pittsburgh into their over front here. So it's 89 here, comes into the formation um, as an inline blocker. And so Pittsburgh responds to their over front. And so um, in, in this case, as we talked about in, in last week's video, um, in that over front, when the off-ball linebacker, in this case, Derek Tuska, comes in and plays off-ball, he's responsible for the A-gap here. He's going to shoot the A-gap opposite where uh, the one tech is. And so that means a guy like Daniel Archibong playing in his first career NFL game for Pittsburgh or in the NFL, he's got to be the three tech. And so he's just late to a line there. And you see bugs get shifted. You see Archibong playing inside here as a, you know, basically two eye inside shade on the right guard 72. He needs to be in the B gap here and play this three tech alignment. And you see bugs to his credit, you know, point that out and say, get down a gap Archibong. So because Tuska has the A gap here. And so, um, that ends up being open and Archibong late to respond there. And he, he ends up getting the gap. So, I mean, he's, he's set right here for the snap of the football, but gets set right, uh, in time with the snap of the football in 74. I think that's, um, uh, Norwood or however you say his name. Um, he washes him down and, and Archibong's taken out of the play. Bush actually has a good play here and makes a tackle, scrapes over the top, but just kind of want to show being very late to get set here to, you know, how do you deal with motion? You're set initially one way. Uh, motion comes in, changes the formation, how Pittsburgh wants to play this thing, puts them in their over front. And I got like Archibong again, first career game. W where am I at? Am I inside here? Am I two eye? Am I, am I, am I in the A gap? Am I in the B gap? And Bugs has to say, Hey man, get down a gap here. And, uh, just being late to that stuff isn't going to help you. Well, once the ball is snapped. Here's a heck of a Steelers defensive front for you. I'm guessing no one, myself included, anticipated. This is uh, Delonte Scott playing in his first game for Pittsburgh. You got Daniel Archibong again. There's Henry Mondo. There's Derek Tuska. So you had Tuska and, and Archibong and, and Scott, I believe, for that matter, weren't Steelers at the start of the season. Mondo was in the practice squad. So that's your front. And so that's how this play starts here. But I want to talk about Scott number 50 here, losing contain on this play, allowing Justin Herbert to escape the pocket. And I believe he picks up 18 yards here on the scramble. And so, um, you know, I, I, I assume maybe that's his run fit here, you know, shooting this gap here inside 87, uh, the tight end, that's Jared cook, but, uh, can't give up the edge here. Got to be able to rip through that block of the tight end and have the athleticism and the flexibility to kind of bend through contact there and not allow, uh, Herbert to escape, uh, to the edge. And he does here lose contain, contain on this play. That was a big issue in this game. Uh, one of the few times Pittsburgh brought pressure and still could not contain this thing up. And, uh, Scott giving up the edge here, allowing Herbert to take off the random pump fake far downfield. And I believe when the next play, Scott was not on the field anymore. And so I don't know if that was planned or not, but next play, they're like, let's get Scott out of there, bring in Alex Highsmith. So uh, you see Scott again, rookie mistake, young guy mistake, I should say, um, you know, costing Pittsburgh here. Trey Norwood became a really a key communicator and one of the hubs of communication in this game, a job usually obviously reserved for Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, Fitzpatrick's first game not playing uh, since being traded uh, from Miami to Pittsburgh. And so you see a lot of chatter between Norwood and the cornerbacks on this example. And there's another one that's going to follow this one up. So I'm kind of uh, clumping these plays together. But you see Norwood talking with James Pierre here pre-snap. There's a signal there. He's communicating with, I believe that's Wither Witherspoon at the... Um, the bottom of the screen here. And so you see Norwood cut the crosser here. Um, Pierre doesn't come off it or kind of comes off of it. 
it feels like something there is wrong. I'm not 100% sure it doesn't hurt the Steelers ultimately, but um, you're just seeing these guys trying to get on the same page. A young guy like Norwood talking to a young guy like Pierre, talking to a new guy like Weatherspoon, um, and they hit the crosser here on this mesh concept. And it's a it's, it's a, a completion, obviously, and a run after the catcher for, for Mike Williams. But um, you're just seeing the chatter here and those guys trying to get on the same page. doesn't feel quite right here. Maybe it's right, maybe it's not, but you just kind of see these guys trying to talk and be the key communicators on this play. And I bring that play up to talk primarily about this play here late in the first half. I'm going to run this thing through. You'll see number 15 just get free on a crossing. You wonder how in the world did that guy get so wide open? And what happened here is communication is supposed to be, at least I believe so, uh, Trey Norwood supposed to cut the crosser like we saw in that first example. And you see James Pierre here um, supposed to replace over the top, kind of like that zombie call Pittsburgh uses against play action, Yankee concepts, post over outs, and, and things like that. So you see Pierre here trying to point to Norwood to cut the crosser here. And you kind of even see him, and I'll kind of run this thing through, there's Pierre pointing, basically trying to wave Norwood, saying, hey, cut the crosser, I'm replacing you over the top um, because I'm out leveraged here on the snap of the football with these reduced splits and Pierre playing off and playing outside. And so um, you'll see Pierre trying to yell and get Norwood's attention there with probably a, a verbal and, a, and obviously a, 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 a hand signal here um, to take the crosser. Norwood does not get that message and ends up being a very easy completion. You see Pierre talking with Norwood after the play, like, you know, pointing his, uh, tapping his helmet there, saying this was the signal, and I'll kind of run this thing through. You see from the end zone view, Norwood uh, talking to Pierre, the, the the helmet tap there, which is whatever what their sign means, probably meaning, you know, cut the crosser here based on reduced splits, based on tendencies and things like that. Norwood does not. And so you have a miscommunication, a busted coverage, um, probably on Norwood on this play, does not cut the crosser. Pierre replaces uh, number 15 wide open. And it's an easy pitch and catch for Justin Herbert. Like the first example, how do you deal with motion whenever the kind of the picture changes for the, the offense there last second? And so like the first example, we'll see the tight end come in from being flexed out and detached as now becoming an inline guy here um, within the core of the formation. And so you see Cook come in and Norwood's trying to talk with Joe Schobert and the signals and, and obviously communication is good. Like it's good to see guys be, be active and talking, obviously, but is the communication effective is the question question. And it does not appear to be so on this play, you see a very late signal here from Norwood coming in, and I run this play through. Um, it's it's hard to know exactly who's wrong here, but something appears to be off. Where well, you see Tuska, Schobert, and the corner on the outside here, all kind of trying to force this ball inside, but there's no one to force it to, um, or fewer people to force it to, because they're all playing outside. So Tuska playing outside on the kickout block from the guard, Schobert's outside, the corner does not replace on the crack and replace. So it's probably definitely on Cam Sutton there for, for at least one responsibility. Again, you could talk about issues. I'm, I'm sure people will yell about uh, Devin Bush, things like that on this one, but um, you could just see some miscommunication pretty clearly on this play. I'll kind of run this thing through from the top view. You see Cook come, come over. You're trying to see Norwood and Schobert. Everyone talk together and something just seems off on this play. And it's a very easy touchdown, unfortunately for Austin Eckler, um, one of four that he had, uh, on Sunday night. So again, just dealing with motion, communicating. Is everyone going to be in the same gap or the right gap here? I don't believe everybody was doing their job properly on this play. You see Schobert kind of throw his hands up like, uh, you know, what what just happened? Something was wrong here. Uh, what's going on? Very easy touchdown there for the Chargers. And so again, dealing with motion, trying to communicate, get everyone set there and just, you know, within a second's time. And uh, they do not do a good job of that on this play. This isn't a bad example. This is actually Joe Schobert kind of showing some veteran leadership and stepping up there and being one of the key communicators. But um, something that could have cost Pittsburgh here, and really the example I'm, I'm trying to show here is a guy like Taco Charlton, just being relatively new to this defense, not you know comfortable in the scheme, not always playing fast enough or reacting fast enough um, as possible. So fourth and one here. This was the big fourth down stop that Joe Schobert had late in the fourth quarter against L.A. Um, they come out here. Three tight ends to one side. So again, Pittsburgh in their over front. Taco knows um, that Pittsburgh's going to be in their over front here in response on this play. And as we've shown a couple times, the off ball linebacker always plays, generally plays, I should say, that that play side A gap. And so, especially on fourth and one, you better put your butt in that A gap right up there on the line in case of a quarterback sneak. sneak. There's a big bubble there for Justin Herbert to, to run to. Obviously, the back could run in that A gap. And so you see Taco just being a little late there to get over into the A gap. And Schubert has to kind of push him and say, get into that A gap right now and get, you know, firing and shooting that A gap to try to get penetration and blow the play up. And so Taco, I think he knows what he's doing on this play. It just has to be done quicker because this is fourth and one. This is not first and 10 or second and seven and or, or something like that. And so you got to really quickly get into that A gap there immediately because this ball could have been snapped quick and that's an easy sneak and conversion for Herbert 
or a quick dive to, I think it's Eckler on the play here. So you're just seeing a young guy, not in those situations too often, a, a new defense for him. He's played in three fours before, but probably not in these over fronts that often um, through his time in the NFL. And so kudos to Schobert on this play for getting them right. But this one could have been bad because Taco's late getting a line properly on the snap. Last example is the Mike Williams 53-yard touchdown. I did a complete breakdown of this play for Steelers Deep. I'll put a link in the description to that one if you want to talk about exactly what went wrong. We'll kind of go through things briefly. This is cover two for Pittsburgh and Trey Norwood, unfortunately, a young guy who kind of bites on number two on this curl route and uh, does not get to his landmark here on the top of the numbers and allows the touchdown, unfortunately, to Mike Williams. So that's just a young guy in a big spot there, um, Keith Butler. Earlier this week talked about, you know, how do guys handle and how do they perform under pressure, I should say. And I think Norwood has played well this year. I'm not souring on Trey Norwood, but this is, I think, completely, obviously, uh, his fault here. You look at the landmark here for Terrell Edmonds on the top of the numbers here. Norwood, for some reason, is kind of biting and driving downhill, and it continues to kind of drive downhill instead of taking a more upfield angle to where Williams will be as opposed to where he's at currently. And so this play, um, to me, is primarily, almost squarely, exclusively on Trey Norwood. So... Tough spot to be in. You can probably tell you there, Minka Fitzpatrick would not make a mistake like this, obviously. But uh, again, young guy, pressure situation, just making an error and a very costly one at that. So again, to be perfectly clear about the intent of this video, I'm not trying to be overly critical of any one of these guys, Archibong or Scott or Norwood or Taco, etc. I'm just trying to show what the value of experience is. That does not always guarantee success or talent or plays and things like that. But guys that are just not used to playing in those roles or playing football at all. Guys that have not played in the NFL before are very, very uh, sparingly. And so you see um, the errors that get made there and how they can add up. And sometimes they don't affect the team too much. Sometimes they can affect the team in game-changing types of ways. But um, I just want to highlight the value of experience. These guys will be all better off for it. Um, but unfortunately, that usually comes with mistakes. It obviously hurt the Steelers as they did on Sunday night, allowing 41 points to the Chargers. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe if you guys not have done so already. And we'll talk to you soon.